We're continuing to take a look at the economic impact of the Port of New Orleans and the thousands of workers it employs throughout our area. Let's go back out to Eric, who's now on the river on a fire boat with a look at something new for the port. Eric? Hi guys, and we are rolling on the river right now. We're heading up to the Napoleon Avenue Wharf because they're getting two big new cranes there. You may have seen that on the skyline if you're in that area. They have four giant cranes there. Two are really big. They have a couple of new cranes on order, which will increase the cargo load they can bring into the port and, and uh, send out of the port. It's really a big deal that they're doing this. The cranes are under construction overseas right now. It'll take about oh, a couple of years to get them completed. We talked with the Vice President and Chief Commercial Officer Bobby Landry about the new acquisition. They should be here in about 18 months, maybe 24 months, depending on the production schedule. And we're also looking at adding two, two in addition to that. Uh, we can order those uh, on the same contract uh, shortly, so we plan on doing that as well. Now, what does that tell you about the port since you're ordering these? Because these are, these are not cheap cranes. Each of these cranes costs about $13 million each. What it tells us about the port is that our volumes are growing, that uh, the ships are getting bigger, and we need these cranes to stay in business. And, and when we look at this, these are kind of the workhorses of, of the port, aren't they? Absolutely. When you look at the volume of business they handle, each one of these boxes we pick up is about 25 tons. So it's moving a lot of cargo at one time. And right now they're all loading onto a ship, correct? Well, yeah, they will be discharging some containers from the ship. This vessel just came in from uh, North Europe. This is a uh, Hatpack Lloyd vessel, came in from North Europe. They'll take some boxes off, but then they'll load some for export. And now, now you're, you're buying these cranes from China. Will the tariffs affect that at all? Well, if the cranes were arriving today and we had to pay for it, yes, the tariffs would affect it. Fortunately for us, we've just started the process, so we won't be paying for these cranes uh, for a while. So we hope the tariffs are out of the way by the time we have to actually purchase the cranes. Because it's, it's a big job building these. It is. It's a long uh, time span to build a job. It takes almost two years, and it takes a lot of manpower and a lot of equipment. And then you have to ship them over here, so there's a lot involved in getting these cranes here. And then setting them up is probably no easy job. Setting them up will take almost three months as well, and we have to take some dock space out of commission and utilize that space to erect the cranes. These giant workhorses are called 100-foot cranes because the wheelbase is 100 feet across, which gives them the stability to handle such big loads. And the arms that actually pick up the containers are even bigger. The boom, what you're talking about, what goes out, that's about a, almost 180 feet. I think these are actually 176 feet. And so when you've got a boom that goes that far out, um, what's the counterbalance? Because these things are not, they're, they're not uh, concreted into the, the, to the, uh, the ground. They move on tracks. Well, that's why we're here, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> the counterbalance? <laughs> now, you know, the, the, these cranes are designed, the wheelbase is designed to handle these weights. So this boom, for example, can reach out over the ship. And this one, you can see, only has uh, about 12 containers across. This one can go almost as many as 17 across and pick up a 25 ton box and come back, but the wheelbase is designed to support that type of activity. How many hours a day is this thing operating? As many as they need. Uh, you know, we do have vessels that come in at all times of day or night, and these cranes will work. We do have routine maintenance schedules where they go down for a certain period of time to uh, be uh, maintained, but uh, if the business is here, these guys will work all the time. And now, we're how many feet off the ground? Because this is a knuckle, a white knuckle uh, grab I got on this rail. Uh, I think the, the, the general comparison is we're about three stories, maybe three and a half stories up in the air. It seems like we're 40 or 50. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we're shaking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but this is really cool. And, and then, then how much more capacity will this, this give the port? Well, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to allow us to work ships faster. So it allows more ships to come in and, and, and be worked. And also it's going to allow us to work the bigger ships. Our whole industry is going toward more of the larger ships that have more containers across, so we've got to have cranes that can reach out and work those. So we anticipate that this will really increase our capacity significantly in terms of just vessel turns. And another thing that another thing that will be increasing capacity is the massive river dredging project they're doing here in the river. We'll have more on that coming up in the next half hour. And just so you know, we are on a moving boat. I'm leaning against this chain here. The boat took a sudden jerk. I almost went overboard. It would have made great television for Sheba, but I think Leslie would have been sad. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're mad. So sorry for oh, you. Oh, no, I but would never wish that on you. So he would be fine. Hey, the water <laughs> probably would cool him off. All right, Eric, we'll check back in you. <laughs> 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 Dave?